Okay, as indicated in the last video, there might be projects that are coming before I finish uh, the wood turning machine. And this is one of those projects. This is a broken blower motor of a central heating or whatever. Um, these are always like made by EBM Pabst. I don't know, can you? Well, just says EBM on here, but it's EBM Pabst now, I think. So, um, this is the piece that goes in here, and this is the motor, and this is like a piece of the motor too. And those are the bearings. Now, <coughs> I got this as broken from eBay for, well, I think one euro plus shipping, so like five euros fifty. Um, this is the motor, and when I got it, I tried to turn it, and it was it had some resistance, which was mostly because those bearing had seized up. And they're a bit rough. I put some WD-40 on it, but I thought before I put these old bearings back in and it will make noise because it felt kind of loose in here. Like, uh, I guess I rather put some new bearings in. Um, and now stupid me uh, took apart this whole thing. I desoldered the motor cores from the board. Uh, to get the bearings out, I could have just done it in the state that it's in now without the screws here because those blocked the bearing in. Um, um, but yeah, so I took that off. When putting it back on, you see there's like a little yellow mod wire. Um, that is because one of those wires broke off. Can you see that? Yeah, well, it's super no focus on this camera, but. Anyway, one of those cables broke off and it was like half a centimeter too short to solder it back on. So I just put that mud wire in there. So this should be working again. Um, so I ordered some bearings. Those will arrive shortly, I hope. <coughs> and then I'll try to get it running. Now, luckily for me, this is a simple motor. It has four cables. Uh, Black and red are power. No, blue, blue and red. Let, let me see. It says on here, red and blue are power. Black is PWM or control input, whatever that is. But I guess it's just PWM. Oh, you don't even see it when I point it there. So, um, and white is RPM output. So, it should be rather simple to drive it. Only downside, it needs. 39 volts that's what it's rated for it works from 25 to 45 according to the label but it's rated power is 39 so now I have this power supply here that's from an old printer um, has 24 volts and 32 now I could just run it with 32 but I kind of want to get the <coughs> normal power rating out of it so um, I have to modify this now this one, well, you can probably not really see this, but here this is the switching controller. That is a opto isolator giving voltage feedback up to 24 volt line. Not like they're connected to each other, so um, I guess uh, they are in, well, they're independent from each other. Like they come both out of the transformer, but there's only feedback for 24 volts, so I guess the 32 one, I don't know what this does up here, like these uh, thingies, if that has something to do with both voltages. I couldn't quite understand what this does. But what I do know is there is a diode in here that takes like 40 milliamps, and there's a transistor on this side that somehow tells this thing how much voltage there is for feedback. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a high value resistor across the secondary side and hope that the voltage will be higher then. So that's uh, what I will do with this one. But first I have to check if it even turns on without me plugging something in here because well there is no connection to this one so I really hope that there is no uh, control mechanism required for this. But yeah, that is the next little project. 
that I will do. There's more of these kinds of fans on the way. So, um, I, initially I just bid on some fans on eBay that were like for one euro, the, the minimum bid. And apparently no one wants defective fans like these. <laughs> so, um, yeah, now I got this one and I got another one of those on the way and several other fans and motors just because I needed something better for this thing. I also still didn't look where I put that box that goes on top of it, but eh. Basically this on a box on top of it. <coughs> That's gonna be uh, what I'm gonna be putting on there. Um, yeah, so that's it for this short update. Uh, I guess nothing else changed. Actually, yes it did. Um, got a new old battery drill. Um, this one has 18 volts. And you see when I wiggle this, the LED changes brightness. So that's also a nickel cadmium uh, or something <coughs> like that. So I I got told the battery is itself a bit weak. So what I might do is also just replace it with um, a lithium cell, just like this one. Just, well, as I did with this one. And I will still try to repair the other drill, but for now I can at least use something till I got that sorted out. So yeah, that's it, and see you in the next video. Bye! Okay, I just checked it, and it of course has a standby circuit, which is this one. So standby voltage is, is um, 12 and 8 something around like that so there has to be something that I have to put in here to make it have a higher voltage and I have no idea what that is so I'll just connect ground to this one pin here on the side and hope it works um, otherwise I'm out of ideas and I don't really want to just scrap the whole circuit here because there's a lot of go shit going on I don't know what what it's gonna do so, yeah, <clears throat> we're gonna see. I'm just gonna apply ground to this and see what happens. Okay, so luckily I still had the old control board of the printer in a working state, because I just took, a, took it apart recently. And I just plugged it in and it suddenly had the 32 and 24 volts. <coughs> Um, and I measured what was on that pin, it was 3.3 .3 volts, so I have to somehow get from the higher voltage stuff 3.3 .3 volts into that pin, which I will probably do with a little regulator. Although I don't know which one I'm going to use yet, because the only 3.3 .3 ones I have are um, SMD. So, yeah, but there's like these four... And um, you can also see it from the bottom. Eh. See this? There's like these four pinholes, actually eight. I can just feed some wires in there. And then I feel the feed of wire over to this um, pin over here. And then we should have our thing constantly turn on. Also, it seems to be very efficient in uh, standby mode. <coughs> because it's um like this big capacitor up here um yeah this one stays at a super high voltage for a long time like the volts just climb one per second and it stays at it starts out at 300 and it keeps the voltage up over here in the standby voltages so 12 and 8 volts for quite a while so it seems to be a pretty good power supply so, yeah, let's see if we can do something <coughs> over here. I just wonder if there's like these two transistors, if it's an analog circuit, but I kind of doubt it. I doubt that it's um, <coughs> analog and I could just <laughs> put a pot on this pin and then 
I'll change the voltage but actually it's worth a try which so that's what I'm gonna do next and I'm gonna uh, put a potentiometer between one of the power pins and actually that doesn't work because as soon as there's power here it will bounce this one up and just blow up okay let's stay with a 3.3 volt regulator and then fiddle with uh, whatever is going to happen here at the optocoupler with a an additional resistor over the two like a high value pot or something I'm going to use for fiddling and then I will hopefully have some resistors that I can put in place there to get the 39 or 40 volts that I need for the blower over here good well what the fucking do these stupid regulators are only good up to 15 volts so now I have to find one that works up to 32 or 24 so yay not a roadblock love roadblocks they're great fuck them so yeah till next video where I maybe finally fix this thing or don't I don't know uh, bye